Hello, hello. Welcome to day 26 of the Fall for Watercolor Challenge. Oh my gosh, can you believe it's day 26? We're getting so far. So today we're gonna do a harvest moon, and that's when like the moon is really big. Um so pretty. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, make sure that you have clean water. Um, actually, I need to pause this because my water is disgusting. So hold on. Okay, without further ado, um, we are going to paint uh, a circle-ish situation. Um, so let's actually just wet our whole area. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet the area. We're going to paint the moon, but we don't want those really, um, we're not going to do it like how we would paint a sun in elementary school, where right? we just do that because we want to have like a very cool background. So what we're going to do is... We are going to get our brightest yellow. Mine is a little dirty, so you, you might need to like make sure it's nice and clean. I think I might just grab some brush yellow um, here so we don't have to deal with that. So okay, let's put that over here. Boop. Nice. I've got my Hansa yellow light. It's like a lemon yellow. Um you know, uh, like a Naples yellow could be really pretty too. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my whole painting area. I think I actually might wanna tape this down um, because I just don't really feel like paying attention to the edges of my painting and I want it to look nice and crisp. Um, also, since we're gonna be putting a lot of water on this, this can help keep our paper from wiggling. So if you are noticing that your paper is warping, especially if you're using like a thinner paper. So the thicker, paper you have or that, um, you know how it says like 140 pound or 300 pound, um, that's letting you know how thick your paper is. Um, and so the thicker your paper, the less warping you're gonna have. Um, and there we go. Okay, and we're gonna put a lot of water on here. So let's go ahead, get a clean brush. And I like to always, if I'm doing a nice perimeter, I like to just take my finger, oh my God, this fly. Ugh. I like to, push my finger around the edge. So I have a really nice, easy um, tape peel that doesn't like have any leaking situation. Okay, so I have painted my little background. I'm gonna take my bright yellow. I want my Harvest Moon to be kind of like huge right here. So go ahead and paint your Harvest Moon, okay? And it's just gonna kind of glow out and I'm just kind of swirling out as the paint is moving through my brush. Just making it like, I'm also gonna kind of do like a little bit of yellow down here, okay? Um, just a light yellow along the bottom. Okay. Just kind of swirling out. Okay, there we go. And then, <laughs> I think I might add in like a little bit of orange. Let's see. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that permanent rose that I like to use and just a smidgy of my new clean yellow. All right. Yeah. I like that. It's kind of like a peachy situation. I'm just going to do a little bit of that down here. And I think I want to just kind of dabble a little bit of that into my moon area, just for a little texture. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. So hair dryers or patience is it is time. I'll pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is almost dry, but um, I want to just kind of take a paper towel and just dab a little bit for some texture inside my moon. Um, so if you'd like to do that too, you totally can. If your dabbing isn't really working, what you can do is you can spray your paper towel with a little bit of water and that's gonna help release some of the paint. Dab, 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 dab. Okay, just for a little texture. All right, and then you can keep drying. Okay, now that we have our, um, our moon, you wanna find something round and moon shaped. Um, and I'm going to use this little water bottle. I'm just going to draw where my moon edges are because I'm not going to want to paint in here. 
And if you've got your, ooh, that's kind of thing. You got yours kind of dark. Um, you can always take your kneaded eraser and kind of roll it on there to erase some of those lines. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I got a line where I didn't really want it. So before we start painting over this, you'll want to lighten this up. This is just kind of our little guide to see what's going on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, I think I'm going to use, um, hmm, my permanent red mixed with a little bit of that yellow color. Yeah. Okay. And I am going to create a nice kind of light layer. So I'm going to go around my moon. Okay. Here we go. I'm going around the moon. And this is creating a space for us to have like a really light, um, glowy moon. So similar to the campfire painting where we were building layers around the glow, but a harvest moon, I feel like it has kind of a sharper outline. So where we kind of smoothed the edges of the campfire, we are, oh, take this down so I can't really move it for where my hand's going. Okay. We smoothed the edges down with our campfire um, to make it really soft. But this one, I want this edge around the moon to be a little crispier. All right, so it's gonna be a little more circular shaped and then I'm gonna take this and just kind of continue this wash across the page. And I love, love, love how the yellow is just kind of glowing underneath. Okay, this is so pretty, so nice. Um, oof. Yummy. Okay. So now I, what I want to do is I want to create some like little moon texture. So we have this little piece of paper towel. If yours is not damp, just lightly wet it. Um, and I'm just going to take some of that light color that I was using. Okay. I'm just going to kind of gently, Oh, you know what? I need even more. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm just going to kind of gently dab this over the moon just to give it a little bit of texture, okay? I don't know that it's like my favorite situation <laughs> of my moons that I've made, but that's okay. All right, so it's still nice and glowy. I do think I wanna add like a little bit more glowy around the moon. So I'm just mixing up a little bit more of that orange color. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Here we go. You can even get a little bit more of that yellow down here. Okay, great. So this is pretty wet, um, but I love the layers that we're building up. So let's go ahead. If you wanted to make some sort of clouds, you could. Um, oops, sorry for my arm, hang on. So if you wanted to grab some more paper towel, you could totally you know, make some little clouds in here. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. All right. Let's leave it at that. We're going to blow dry this and we will be back for more in a minute. It'll feel like no time at all to you. Let's pop. All right. So now what we're going to do is something called a gradient wash or, um, yeah, a gradient wash. And um, we are going to bring like a dark blue and work our way down um, to 
just water. Um, we might even throw some, I would throw some yellow at the bottom, but you don't want to make it green. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up my brush and get a nice dark blue. I'm using a kind of combination between Indanthrin blue and Payne's gray. So I'll start at the top of the Payne's gray. Just make sure you're avoiding your moon. Okay. So we're not painting the moon. Woo. Um, Okay. See what I mean about the paint? I just didn't feel like fussing with it too much. And I'm using a big brush that's going to make it easier to, you know, uh, cover a big space and not have things kind of fade out. So I'm adding a little bit more of that indanthrin blue up here. Oh, gosh. Oh no, it's okay. We covered our moon, but it's fine. We got paper towel. All right. Oh golly. Okay, we'll we'll do an exercise on how to erase that later. Um, <laughs> so if you do do that, um, I can help you. Okay. So now we're gonna keep working our way down, kind of lightening this up a little bit. Oh my god, I'm so sloppy today. We need our Okay, we're doing great. Okay. Um, all right. This poor little man. Here. Uh, so I'm grabbing my paper towel. I'm kind of twisting it into like a point. And I'm gently sucking up the edges here. Okay, now I'm just going to take water for the rest of this. Make sure I have a really clean brush, get all that blue out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to meet my way up here, okay? Avoiding the moon, presumably. No promises, clearly. Okay? Then we can kind of bring that down. Okay. Here we go. And I love that we can kind of see those clouds that we created a little bit back. Just making a nice, smooth transition. Adding a little bit more darkness kind of to the edges of the upper areas. Just going to let the water kind of like figure it out. Okay. Like that. Might just make my moon a little smaller. <laughs> Maybe that will help. It's still all wet. I think I can do that. Okay. I do that. Just really, oh golly. Okay. Here we go. It's all good. Okay. So I'll talk about how to uh, clean that up in a sec. So we're going to let this dry, but I do want to lift up some of that color. So we're going to grab a piece of plain dry paper towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take clean water and I'm just going to wiggle it over this line. Okay. And then I'm going to dab, dab, dab. So it's tricky because we're using a very dark color right next to it. And I don't want to like activate that paint too much like what I just did and get it into the zone. Um, okay. You can also take, um, like I have a little scrubby brush that I can use. It's called a scrubber. So just get some clean water and then you can just kind of scrub at that line. Now this will stress out your paper a little bit. So try to go slow and gentle, but it's good for emergencies. And you know what we could do is we could make a little cloud here too. Sometimes you gotta get creative. And I see that it's, my paper is kind of already stressed out. So let's just make a little cloud, okay? All right, let's do that. 
Okay, so now we can make a little cloud over here too. Okay, what we'll do is we'll kind of gently bring some, some of it in, nice and soft. Okay, just a little bit. Kind of tickle those edges. And as you can see, while it's made the, the moon a little bit darker, it's actually made the blue around the outside a little bit lighter. And so we can take our paper towel and kind of soak up some of that color. And kind of where our clouds were on the other one. Okay. I actually like that quite a bit. So you just never know, right? Mistakes are the invention. What's that? You know that quote I'm thinking of? Okay. All right. And then maybe I'll take a little bit of this dark color and kind of get a little bit of a darker cloud down here. Contrasting on that sunset. Okay. I like it. I like it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry for real, for real. And we are going to then come back in and do like a cool kind of like a dark overlayer thing. I'll show you. All right, pause. All right, so if you've really been enjoying the evergreen trees, this could be a great time to practice your evergreens. I think I might do like kind of a gnarly, creepy tree. Um, so I'm grabbing my Halo blue, or sorry, my paint's gray and some orange color that I've mixed up to make a little bit of like a dark color, a little bit of red and green in there too, just to get like a blackish situation. If you ever work with ink, this could be a really cool time to bring in some ink. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my tree trunk. Like, so this is going to be a tree without any leaves. Okay. going kind of go like that. All right, and this can be really saturated too, all right? And maybe I have like a branch here, okay? And what I'm doing here is just creating my scraggly tree shape. And actually it's gonna be much taller because I really want some of this to cover the moon. Okay, that's kind of the whole point. So, like that. And so, if you think about it, the tree trunk is the thickest part, and then the branches are going to be thickest where they attach to the tree. Um, oh, yeah, I'm kind of digging this. All right. Let's see here. And then they'll kind of taper off. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice spooky tree. Okay, let's do like a thicker branch over here. And maybe there's so maybe that's like in the background. Make some branches off of the branches you've already made. Could be very daring and put like a bird on there if you wanted. I feel like, I don't know, I kind of want to do like some witches like riding in the wind. Should we do it? Should we do it? Okay. Okay. Maybe watch and see if this is what you want to do too. I'm going to grab my little brush because I feel like it could also be my ruin. <laughs> so let me let me be brave first. <laughs> then you can decide. All right. So here we go. I'm going to have, I'm going to try to do it kind of light. Here's a broomstick. Just going to be like sitting here. Here's our other little foot. Here, so it's kind of like a triangle. And then 
She's got her little, oh yeah, no, this is going to be cute. Okay, she's holding the broomstick. And she's got her little hat on. Got a very long arm. <laughs> okay. There we go. That's okay. So maybe she's waving to us. Hi. She's tipping her hat. I love it. Okay. She's like, do, 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 do. and she's on her way. Okay, now I feel like I can go back. A little more pigment on my brush and really darken that up. A big broom for a little lady, but I like it. I might take my smaller brush and add like a couple more little like twiglets to my to my tree. This is adding a nice touch here. Ooh. Spooky. All right. We've combined a lot of skills. So we did like some cool blending stuff. We did some wet and wet. We're doing some wet on dry. We have um Done this outline, um, this dark outline to indicate something's in front of the light source. Oh man, we've done some layers. Oh, good one. Oh, good one. Okay. Should we do the tape peel together? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, got me. Okay. <gasps> Da, 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 da. I was like, it looks good, but it's going to look even better once we do the tape peel. Okay. So what happened here is I used a little too much water and um, we can use the scrubby brushes on those edges. Um, but there we go. How cool is that? Oh, so fun. All right. So that was day 26. We painted a harvest moon. We are almost at the end of the month. So um, yeah, if you want to share your posts on the interwebs, I love to see them at Splatter and Bloom. You can tag me. Um, and congratulations. We're almost there. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow for some fall mountains. Woo!